Hello and welcome. We are going to look at question 9 of UCE 2020. That is UNEB. Chlorine dissolves in water to form hypochlorous acid. Write the equation for the reaction leading to the formation of hypochlorous acid. Now if you look at chlorine, we have chlorine like this and we also have our water molecule like this so this means that this means that if we are to ensure this to react we shall have something like this we shall have hydrochloric acid and then the remaining will be our hypochlorous acid so when chlorine reacts with water we shall have hypochlorous acid and hydrochloric acid so this is our chlorine which is a diatomic molecule while also we have our water which has a bent shape. So during the reaction our chlorine molecule will split, one of the chlorine atom will react with this hydrogen atom to form our hydrochloric acid and the remaining will form our hypochlorous acid. Sometimes it is written as this but it has no problem. Both of these are soluble in water, so we are having our aqueous being written. So in this case, the equation is balanced on its own. State what would be observed if a handkerchief stained with black ink was soaked in hypochlorous acid. Now we know that chlorine, when dissolved in water, tends to have what we call bleaching properties. So chlorine has a bleaching property when dissolved in, in water. To bleach basically means to remove color or at least to cause something to turn to white or at least a lighter color. So they are telling us that we had a handkerchief with, a bl with black ink and then we soaked it in hypochlorous acid. So the bleaching property of chlorine is due to the formation of this hypochlorous acid. So this hypochlorous acid is unstable and it will always tend to break down into hydrochloric acid and nascent oxygen, a free oxygen atom. So this free oxygen atom will always play part in the bleaching properties of chlorine. So what will be observed? Obviously, we shall see the stain being bleached or removed because it will turn to white or the handkerchief would turn to, to white. So bleaching, I would prefer this because of the chemical term bleaching, the stain would be bleached. You can't tell whether completely or partially, but at least the stain would be bleached. We have hypochlorous acid solution was exposed to bright sunlight. State what was observed. Now this hypochlorous solution, acid solution is actually unstable. This hypochlorous acid is unstable and tends to follow this reaction. However, when we have a number of these, the same hypochlorous acid will break down to give off hydrochloric acid and oxygen gas. So you have to balance it. So we shall form our hydrochloric acid and oxygen gas. When two nascent oxygen atoms combine, we form our oxygen gas. So they want us to explain what happened. So from that equation, we can tell that the hypochlorous acid decomposes. Basically, it is to break down. It is unstable. Usually, if something is unstable, it will either fall, break, or decompose. So, hypochlorous acid decomposes into oxygen. This is our oxygen. And then hydrochloric acid. So, this could have been a gas, but due to the presence of water, it will dissolve. This hydro hydrogen chloride gas will dissolve to form hydrochloric acid. So, we shall form our oxygen and our hydrochloric acid. Someone could say we can also see bubbles of a colorless gas. As our oxygen is leaving this solution, if you have a solution of our hydrochloric acid and hypochlorous acid, when this reaction takes place, obviously this compound will start decomposing and we shall see our oxygen escaping. So we are likely to see bubbles of a colorless gas because oxygen is colorless. In terms of solution, when you look at chlorine, whenever chlorine is dissolved in water, the solution formed is a bit yellowish. So we can set our yellowish 
green or green yellow or pale yellow color of the solution will tend to fade it will tend to fade because we shall mainly be remaining with actually hydrochloric acid in solution and you know hydrochloric acid is a colorless solution so we are likely to see the color of our solution fading or turning to colorless so state what was observed or what happened actually not what was observed the hypochlorous acid decomposes into oxygen and hydrochloric acid and our yellow color of the solution will, will fade or will turn colorless lastly state what would be observed if chlorine was bubbled into potassium bromide solution then tetrachloromethane added to the resultant mixture so we have our we have our we are having chlorine chlorine gas being added to potassium bromide so we have a solution here of potassium bromide so this solution is obviously colorless and we are adding a green yellow gas or yellowish green gas into this mixture but we know that chlorine is more reactive than bromine so what is likely to happen we are likely to see the following reaction we are likely to see chlorine reacting with potassium bromide and then displacing this bromine from solution so we shall form our potassium chloride plus our bromine liquid so you know potassium chloride just like sodium chloride is soluble in water and it's a colorless solution so we shall balance it with the two and the two so what do we note our colorless solution we are producing bromine liquid which is basically red but in presence of water we shall see which actual color we are likely to see it will be kind of reddish brown it may not be thick red so they are saying we added chlorine to this solution and then we added tetrachloromethane we shall look at tetrachloromethane tetrachloromethane this is our tetrachloromethane or carbon tetrachloride which is ccl4 this is a liquid it is colorless and it is mainly organic in nature meaning it's not ionic it's non-ionic so it's non-polar it has no ions so we have bubbled chlorine into potassium bromide solution so our observation will be the colorless solution this colorless solution of potassium bromide colorless solution is one thing we shall see before we add chlorine it will turn reddish brown it will turn reddish brown because of the formation of bromine liquid in presence of water it won't be so red at least it will be kind of like faint red which is our reddish brown and eventually the dark liquid separates out what do you mean by separating out when we add carbon tetrachloromethane we shall get something like this if we have a separating funnel have our separating funnel and we have our carbon tetra or our carbon tetrachloride or tetrachloromethane and our water on top here in this case our water will be a mixture of potassium chloride and bromine liquid so here we have our aqueous solution so when we add this colleague into this mixture here the two will separate out like this because our aqueous solution cannot mix with this non-ionic solution but now our bromine liquid will move and separate because first it can dissolve in this molecular solvent so we shall see our bromine liquid moving or separating out and dissolving in this carbon tetrachloro sorry our tetrachloromethane so that's what we mean by the dark liquid separates out so our bromine from this equation will dissolve in carbon tetrachloride and then we shall stay with our colorless solution here up so that's what we mean by eventually the dark liquid separates out or we can say eventually two layers are formed when we add tetrachloromethane to the resultant solution 
feel free to pause or rewind this video and try to internalize whatever I've tried to describe here. That's all I had for you. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.